During this lesson on flight warning, we will briefly look at the flight warning system and its components. Then we will examine in detail the three different types of alerts, which are visual, oral, and sensory. The basic purpose of an integrated flight warning system is to prioritize all alerts so as to improve a crew's situational awareness. It achieves this by producing different types and levels of alerts relevant to the stage of flight, thereby ensuring that the crew tackle the warning posing the most immediate threat to safety. Before we understand the details of different types and the different levels of alerts, we will very briefly examine the components that make up the flight warning system. The flight warning system consists of a processing unit to which we have numerous inputs from various system sources including engine, airframe and air data sensors as well as the ground proximity warning system and the traffic alert and collision avoidance system. Most of the input sources and the associated warnings will be covered in this course and they will be dealt with in separate lessons. However, warnings for engine and airframe system malfunctions will not be covered as they are dealt with within the power plants and system courses. Having very briefly discussed the flight warning system and its components, we will now examine in detail the three different types of warnings that are given to flight crew. The first of these are visual alerts, and there are actually three levels of visual alert. The first and highest is warnings, or level A alerts, which appear in red and must attract the crew's attention in sufficient time to take immediate action. The second level is cautions, or level B alerts, which appear in amber or yellow and require immediate crew alertness with possible future action. The third level is advisories, or level C alerts, which appear in any other colour than red and require crew alertness. Unlike the previous alerts, there are no actions to be completed. Depending on the aircraft type, visual alerts will be depicted in one of two ways, either on electronic screens, as we have already shown, or as lights and or flags, which is normal on older aeroplanes. Master warning and caution lights, also known as attention getters, are also provided for each pilot to attract their attention to problems that require their immediate attention and located so as to be clearly visible during a normal instrument scan. In older aeroplane types, these are accompanied by a master warnings panel where the warnings are placed in a rational order. Having looked at visual alerts, we will now consider audible warnings. An audible warning is mandatory if a pilot needs to take control of the aeroplane and this can take the form of sounds or a synthetic voice or a combination of both. As you can imagine, there are numerous types of these alerts and we will just mention a few out of interest. Boeing aeroplanes have bells which accompany fire warnings and a whaler accompanies autopilot disconnect. On Airbus aircraft, a continuous repetitive chime accompanies all level 3 alerts, and a cavalry charge sound is used for autopilot disconnects. In both types of aeroplanes, synthetic voices are used for traffic alert and collision avoidance systems. Monitor vertical speed. And ground proximity warning systems. Wind shear, wind shear, wind shear. Finally, we consider sensory warnings. The prime example of a sensory warning is the stall warning system. This causes the control column to vibrate. In some aeroplanes, it also pushes the control column forward as a stick push, which initiates a change in pitch of the aeroplane. This is the end of the flight warning system lesson, and you should now understand the different levels of alert 
and the different ways a crew can be alerted to both internal and external dangers. You should also be able to understand the basic makeup of a typical flight warning system and the various inputs and outputs required for the system to work.